control. Breach in five, four, three. <laughs> What's up, guys? I'm Uncle Freedom, coming to you on a glorious and well-deserved day off. And today, we're going to take a look at Bug Out Bag Uncomfortable Truths, Volume 2. So, if you haven't checked out the first one, I'll leave a card somewhere up in here uh, for you to go check that out. It's the first installment of this one. We're going to do Bug Out Bags Volume 2, so if that sounds fun and interesting to you, go ahead and like, subscribe, tell a friend. channel is growing. It's awesome. I've had a lot of people reach out and say, hey, man, can you go back to some of the prepper related stuff? We like this other stuff, but we, the prepper stuff was really cool. And I'm always game to kind of give you guys what you want to see. Uh, I've also done recently a lot of like uh, reloading, hand loading videos, shooting for accuracy. Go check those out uh, if you would. If you need to get in touch with me, it's at Uncle Freedom 213 on Facebook, at Uncle Freedom 213 on Instagram, or Uncle Freedom 213 at Outlook.com. On my Instagram and Facebook page, I also have my Linktree account, which will take you to the link page for the affiliates of my channel. People like Gun Mag Warehouse, Coltac, um, Dry Fire Mag, Warren Tactical, Tyrant CNC, just to name a few. So if it was something you were looking for anyway, guys, every little bit helps the channel, and I appreciate it. So let's get into this. Bug Out Bags, Uncomfortable Truths, Volume 2. The first uncomfortable truth of bugging out with a bug out bag is you are not going to simply walk from A to B. There, by its very nature, you bugging out means something has gone terribly wrong here and you are no longer safe, which is usually going to coincide with rule of law breaking down or it being T.O. Tawaki or it being SHTF and you are trying to get to point B where you can now be safe. Stealth is important. Stealth is everything. It's already gone bad. You don't want people. This isn't why this isn't hiking the AT where you link up with people and you move to your next point. Because who said you want them at your second point? You don't want to be linked up with people or have people following you to a location that you've secured with all of your supplies. You don't want company. If you wanted company, you would have told them where it was. But you didn't. Stealth is everything. That goes into everything you do. Stealth matters in this world. Number two, practice, practice, practice. I can't tell you how many times I see a guy do a bug out bag layout video in the bag weighs 65 or 70 pounds. And I can look at that dude and be like, that dude, the last time he ran was when the McRib came back. You, you're not going to suddenly be better because everything went sideways right? That's not how this works. You default to your highest level of fitness, highest level of effective training. You have to go out and practice this stuff. You have to be able to take those knowledge that I spoke of in the first video, take that information, go out into the woods, use that and figure out with your gear. You have to take your gear out and use it because you'll realize things like, man, this rubs and it hurts, or this isn't big enough, or this didn't work, or I didn't have enough food. You don't know that stuff unless you go out and put a plan in action and actually try to do it. So practice is everything. You don't practice, you're not going to do as well as you think. If well at all, if you don't die. Number three, everybody you encounter is a bad guy until they prove they're not. I know this sounds like bad, but it's true. Good people do bad stuff when their kids get hungry. If the world's gone to crap, Who's to say they're not taking this to mean that we've just entered the purge, right? Everybody's a bad guy until they show that they're not a bad guy. You might make connections with people that can actually further your survivability later on down the road, and they become a, a, a treasured asset to your little community. But you could also meet a guy that pretends he's a treasured asset and then robs you in the middle of the night. Everybody's a bad guy, and you should treat everybody with skepticism in this world until they prove they're not. Number four, you do not need five different guns in five different calibers. I don't know how many times, people in the back, we have to say this, you do not need five guns, five different calibers. 
There is something to be said for having a small, lightweight 22 long rifle for harvesting food during your bug out pest control. You can do a lot of stuff with a 22, but you do not need a 308 battle rifle, a AR-15 battle rifle, your 12 gauge pump shotgun with two separate barrels for those situations, and then you know your handgun, and then your other handgun, and then you know, but you really like 10 mil, so you threw your 10 mil in there, and then you have a pistol caliber carbine because well, that's good for this thing. You're not being realistic. You're going to walk with this stuff that way. Like you're going to go walk. You are not carrying, let alone all those guns. You're not, because you have to think of it this way. If your gun weighs eight pounds, that's a gallon of water. If you have eight mags worth of ammo to go to that gun and they weigh roughly a pound a piece, that's another gallon of water. So that's stuff that can keep you alive. And I know it sucks. Man, we're all going to hate. I'm going to hate leaving behind stuff if I have to bug out. But if you thought ahead and you planned out and you followed pace and you had all these things done that I got covered in video number one, you've got stuff at a location that you're going to. You're not going to carry all that. Personally, for me, I'm going to go over a recommendations video where we're going to talk about bug out bags, my bug out bag, the systems that I run in there. But it's really hard to beat. I mean, OK, take down 22 a good handgun and, uh, you know, an AR. Okay. I mean, even a bolt gun, maybe, but you're going to have to tailor your ammo around it. You're not carrying all that stuff. We talked about ammo in the first video, but you're not going to carry it all. I'm sorry. I don't care how big and strong you are. Ruck marching is the great equalizer of big, strong people. It will break you all apart equally. Number five, what is your plan for waste? This goes to that stealth thing. Are you going to crap in a bag or are you going to bury it like a cat? What about if you do harvest an animal? Are you What are you going to do with the entrails and remains? You have to leave no footprint. Because if you leave a footprint, a moderately intelligent individual can track you to where you're going. And even if they don't wipe you out on trail and turn into marauders, they will probably come take your stuff away from you at your secured bug out location. Because they were following you the whole time. Reconnaissance is useful. Like we use this stuff all the time. You have to have a plan for dealing with food waste, packaging, human waste, kill waste from like this. And God forbid you get into a gunfight. Now you have to find a way to do something with the result of your gunfight that hopefully you won. Uh, though I will tell you the best way to win those is not to get into them. You have to have a plan to deal with those things. And that plan has to be carried on you. And in some cases, like in my own life, I have packed my own crap out of a hide site in a freaking plastic bag in my rucksack. It's not glamorous, but nothing about this is. It's not a movie. It's going to suck. Period. This will suck. It's not going to be fun. It's not going to be a camping trip. It's not going to be like any movie you've ever seen. It's going to suck. And you have to realize that. And you are going to have to do things that you would normally not do. Like pack your crap out in a plastic bag for the next 40 miles until you can figure out something to do with it. It would also behoove you to make sure that bag is tied up nice and tight. Otherwise, you're going to have some rank stuff. So that that you got to have a plan. Number six, bugging out on foot has vastly different medical considerations than bugging in or being on a homestead or in a car. You have lots of things that go wrong when you walk on foot. You're going to have to carry moleskin, duct tape. You're going to get blisters. You're going to have these problems. I know you bought the best boots in the world. I have great boots that are super broken in. I've gotten blisters because it just happens. Recognizing those hot spots or when things are starting to happen and addressing them immediately, if you can, is a different medical consideration than you being at home and stubbing your toe. They're not the same thing. And you're going to have to carry a different type of medical like chafing powder, moleskin, duct tape, things like that to help you keep going than you would at home. For those people that I hate pain medication, I don't take anything at all. I speak Advil Ranger candy at mile 12. Like, you are going to need this stuff. Number seven, you have to be 100% ready to ditch gear. I know, you spent money on it. You love your shit, right? I like mine too. I am also well aware 
that I am going to have to ditch something if it goes really wrong. Cause there's no way that I'm going to hump it out with all my stuff. That's the reason you have to tear out your gear and level things up. The stuff you absolutely can't live without does not need to be inside of the first bag that you, ch you chuck. It needs to be where you can grab it and run and leave this larger thing that now it's going to suck. Like your life's going to be worse, but you were smart enough and you plan things out in your emergency plan that in your bailout bag, which we're going to do a video on, that bag has your essentials to life in it. It may not be the most comfortable thing in the world, but you won't die now. Whereas if you have it all tucked in the middle of your rucksack and you get into a terrible situation, like maybe you didn't plan accordingly, or maybe that river was wider than you thought this time, because that's a real, real thing. And you're going across this river and maybe you didn't build your raft out of your ruck as well as you thought. And your ruck took on water and sank. Well, you just lost that rucksack, right? I really hope you were smart enough to put your emergency supplies in something that wasn't in that damn rucksack because you're not getting it back. Things break. We lose things. Things fail. Things sink in rivers when we try to ford rivers. Things happen. You have to be able to ditch things and not die. And that goes into planning out your gear setup from your armor, your chest rig, your belt, your assault pack. Having a, the ability to separate your stuff and know that you won't die now. It ain't going to be great, but you're not going to die. Versus I had all my eggs in this one giant rucksack and it went wrong and I lost my ruck. In the middle of the night, if you're camped out and dudes walk into your site and you have to bail, you should have a bag you can grab and bail, have enough stuff that you can survive for at least a few days to figure out what to do next, even though you just lost all your fancy stuff. Got to have a plan for that, guys. Number, uh, also, I will say on the, the, the whole, like, ditching gear, getting killed or dying because you didn't want to lose things that you paid for is dumb. Oh, it's so stupid. I would not be friends with you if that's your world, okay? Number eight, stealth again. Mobility, though. It's your friend. Stealth and mobility are hand in hand. If you put on your rucksack and you jumped up and down, do you hear things? Because if you hear things, guess what? In a world without a lot of sound because things have gone to crap, other people are going to hear that too. And you are now wearing like a, a bear bell that tracks people to you. You have to go through, make sure your stuff is silenced. Make sure you don't have stuff that's rattling inside of a, a, a steel container in your thing. You have to silence the stuff in your bag. Same deal. If you're wearing a chest rig and you've got all this Velcro and crap, you have to have considerations done so that you don't make that noise if you need it. Now, I don't agree with the whole thing where I've had guys be like, well, I want to be stealthy because the gunfight happens and this happens and I can use this. If we're shooting, stealth is over. Now you have to win. Like stealth doesn't matter. Speed, surprise, violence of action. Those are how you win a fight. You have to have two of them to win. You can be super fast, but you also got to surprise the crap out of them or you can surprise them and be ultra violent or you can be super fast and act aggressively, but you have to have two of the three to win fights. 100% it's got to happen, but you've got to silence the stuff in your bag. Take your stuff out. This goes back to practice. Shake it. Move it around. If stuff starts making noise, address it because you don't want to be like, I'll fix that tomorrow. And then you bug out the, the middle of the night because everything went to shit and you're just chiming like a freaking entry door at your, you know, at Walmart as you walk around and people are following you around, picking you off. Don't do it. Silence your gear. Stealth, mobility. They are hand in hand. Number nine. A sure thing will always 100% be better than a good chance. Why in the hell would I put all of my eggs in the basket that I'm going to purify water, carry one water container because I'm going to purify water? That's not a sure thing. What happens if I can't get to the water source because it's surrounded by people? Or a guy who's suddenly taken himself as a warlord has blockaded off the water supply and won't let you into it. What's your plan now? If that was all of your plan, you bet your stuff on a good chance you were going to be able to get to it. Don't bet your life on a good chance. Err on the side of a sure thing when it's possible. And it's never bet your life on, well, maybe. I'm not carrying food. I'm just going to hunt and trap. Okay, that's, I mean, there's a good chance that you could be a good hunter, but it's also not a sure thing. And if you get it wrong, you play that game, you're going to die. Sure things will always beat good chances. And number 10. 
you will always want to have access to water, fire. But the reality of this is you won't always have access to make a fire or to water that day. Um, security. You may have to be put yourself in an uncomfortable situation to provide the security you need. You're going to have to make compromises. You're not going to always have access to these things. You're not going to always have a fresh running stream that's not contaminated or guarded by somebody. You're not always going to have the ability to make a fire to heat your food up. So it's important that you plan around that ability that you may not have it and have the ability to have food you can eat cold without prepping it. Mountain houses are great, but you got to boil water. Otherwise, you're not going to have it. And if you can't start a fire or you can't get water, you're not eating. You have to plan around these things. Have a different plan. Again, pace, primary, alternate, contingency, emergency. Plan according to pace. It's like net TC, but more useful. And some bonus for you today. And I touched on this with knowledge in the other one. The stuff that you carry should supplement your knowledge in natural skills. They should never be a replacement for knowledge. If you don't know how to do something, go learn it. And then use the stuff that you carry to supplement that knowledge, making it better. Don't rely just on stuff. Knowledge doesn't weigh shit, and the stuff you carry should supplement your knowledge. Another bonus point, eyes, ears are essential. I can't tell you how many times I've been hit in the face with a stick in, in the woods with no one around, right? Like, it happens. Wear eye pro. Wear, have clear eye pro, smoke eye pro. You should always have eye pro. Not to mention the gun thing, eye pro's good. Ears, they have two purposes in this world. If you're wearing electronic ear protection, now you can shoot and don't go deaf, but you can also, you have like superhuman hearing in the woods. Like Walker's actually makes a version of this called the Walker Game Ear. Oh, it's awesome. Like you can hear crap happening way off to the side and at least get oriented towards it. So buy decent ear pro. I always have ear pro and eye pro in my bags. Uh, going to that, be, don't be afraid to ditch. You should have a last ditch bag in this setup. There should be a bag that is packed in, attached to your bag or in the very top of it or attached to you that if everything went sideways and you had to cut loose, you know, plate carriers gone, rucksacks gone, I got to move now. You should have a ditch bag you can throw over. It's light, keeps you maneuverable, and keeps you alive, more importantly, until you can solve the problem. And the last thing I leave you guys with on this is your bug out bag is a system, not a thing. Too many people view a bug out bag as like, this is my bag, it's awesome, and it weighs like 197 pounds, but I'm a man, and I go to the gym, just work out more, bro. It's a system. So like that combined with your plate carrier or your chest rig or your belt system or your chest pack from like hill people gear, an assault pack, the ability to maneuver and change things around. If you get into a situation where you need to scout and hunt because you're safe for a few days and you have to replenish stuff, you should have a system that allows you to not carry everything in the bag all the time and allow you to actually do what you need to do without weighing yourself down, making you more mobile and making you more stealthy, not drawing as much attention to yourself. So, boom, there you go, guys. That is Bug Out Bags, Uncomfortable Truths, Volume 2. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Stay tuned, because we have Uncomfortable Truths of Prepping, Volume 3 and Volume 4. And I know you guys love those, and you won't want to miss them. Again, I appreciate your support. Uncle Freedom 213 on Facebook or Instagram, or Uncle Freedom 213 at Outlook.com. Reach out to me with questions or concerns. If you've got a good video idea, I'm always game. But stay tuned. We're going to go further down this rabbit hole where we look at my bug out bag, my bailout bag, my weapon systems, my setups that I use for these specific situations. And we'll talk more about those skills and how to augment those skills and make them better using gear and how to make those decisions. So guys, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Till next time. I'll see you later.